Hi, welcome to this video on QR code generation with Python. In this video, I want to tell you about how to generate QR codes with Python. Firstly, in a very quick way, essentially the simplest way possible. And afterwards, we'll look at a bit of customization of the QR code. First of all, what is a QR code? Most of you have probably seen this before here. You can see the Wikipedia page. So it's essentially, it stands for a quick response code. And it's this kind of matrix barcode. What this means is just that it's a two-dimensional image, as you can see here, of black and white squares representing some data. If you see on the right, you can see it here. And it's not immediately obvious to humans what this represents. But for a computer, this is rather easy to digest and translate this to the raw data that you're really transferring here. Most of you have probably seen and also used QR codes by, for instance, taking a picture with your phone of a QR code and then essentially getting redirected to a website. So in that regard, the QR code just encapsulates the URL information of the web page. And this is probably the most standard way of using QR codes. Before we get started in Python, you might ask, why would you really do this with Python? Here I've searched for QR code generation. And as you can see, you can probably find almost an infinite amount of online tools for creating QR codes. So before we get loose with Python, a very genuine question is, why would you really do this with Python? Can't you just use one of these easy click and drag tools? And the answer honestly is yes, for some cases, this is equally good, but for others, this is a lot more cumbersome. If you only need to generate one single QR code, then you can probably easily do it here with an online click and drag tool. But in many applications, you need to generate loads of different QR codes representing slight variations. So one place many of you have seen QR codes is essentially at the restaurant. So each table has a QR code. But some restaurants that do this as a bit clever and include the table number. So when you scan the QR code of the table, you don't need to include the table number. This is included in the link that you then go to and is automatically sent essentially to the restaurant. Say if your restaurant has 70 or 100 tables, this is a lot to do with an online tool that mostly supports generating a single QR code. And then of course, if you need to do some maintenance on the website and you slightly change the URL or the base URL, you need to generate all the QR codes over again because now the links doesn't work. So that's a 70 to 100 new QR codes you need to generate. So here it's really nice to be able to do QR codes, for instance, in Python. So enough general introduction. The tool I'll be using is this external library called Python QR code. Here you can see the GitHub page and here you can see some simple code examples. I'll go through some of them with a bit of variation. We can find this GitHub page in the description of this video if you want to look at it even more. So I'll just do this video in a Jupyter Notebook if you want to do something else like VS Code or a different editor that's completely fine, of course. Here I've just started and I've written pip install QR code. And also notice that I have this brackets with PIL. This is for a library called Pillow that deals with images. If you don't already have this, this is good to include. So as you can see here with this Jupyter command, I've now installed the QR code library. So what I'll first do is just to import QR code. Hopefully this should run for you. And first of all, I just want to explain the simplest way to generate a QR code. Here is no customization at all. This is just the most bare bone way of doing this. Here you can go to QR code library and then use the command make. And here pass in say a string of information. Let's say just my information and generate this. And here you can see that you get a QR code. So this is of course the most bare bone ways of doing this. So let me just call this image. And of course here we have our image again, but now we can also do image.save and save this to a location. Let's just call this my first image.png and save that. And here you can see my directory. So here I had the Jupyter Notebook file and now we have also my first image.png. And as you can see, here is the PNG. So here I've included text information that is now encapsulated in the image. Of course, it's a lot more common to just include a link, for instance. So if I do www.google.com like this and do the same all over again, I'll get a QR code that is slightly different representing essentially this information. So when you scan the QR code with your mobile phone, you'll then be asked to be redirected to google.com. So this is the simplest way of creating a single QR code. So instead of doing it the most simple way, you can also get some customization by doing it in a bit different way. So we've imported QR code here. Then what you can do is to go to QR code and go into the class QR code. Here I think it's QR is capitalized and also C in code. And here you can see here the class initiation. And here you can specify some arguments to the class. So I won't go through most of these. So maybe I'll just play around with the box size and border. So you can see here that border is by default four and box size is 10. So let me do actually the border of four just as a default, but box size can be for instance, 30. Here you just return essentially the class. Let me just assign this to QR. Now we can do QR dot add data, and then add the information again. So let me also just do google.com, paste this in here. And now what you typically want to do is to do QR make, 
and then set fit to true. What it does now is to fit the size to the information you have. So you need to do this. But as you can see here, you don't have an image yet. You just have this class thing. So what you can do to get an image is to go to make image, I think. Yeah, you can make the image from a QR data code. Here you need to fill in, I think, fill color. So the fill color, let's say that this is just black as default. Then you also have, I think this is called back color. And let's say that this is white. It looked like this worked. So here you can see the image. So the colors are the same now, both in the filling. So this is the color here, the black one. And in the background color, this is the back color, this is white. You can see that the box size, so this is just the size of each of these boxes here, has been significantly bigger. If I also want to tweak the border, it's a good idea to actually have the back color not white, because then it's a bit harder to see. So let's just do blue. Doesn't look amazing, but let's just do this for now. Here you can see that the border is four. And what this means is that you can essentially take four of these squares here and stack them on top of each other all the way out to the border. So if I increase this to say 10, for instance, run the things again, I get this really enormous border. You can play around with box size and border if you want to customize it more. I think I'll just do this with either three or four is fine and box size default is 10. So maybe let's make a smaller one, seven. Here you go, here's a small QR code. So if you want to make QR codes for say posters that actually looks good with the other colors in the poster, then you need to specify, of course, a nice fill color and a back color. You can see that you have some default colors you can specify by name like black, blue, and white, but typically we'll specify this as tuples of RGB values. So just to show you how this works, I've made two tuples, a fill color and a back color here. And now let's just run everything again. And here you can see you can change the colors. So if you need to mesh the QR code with some previous design, this is a great way to do this. This is now just a type of pillow object again, so an image object, and now you can do dot .save as previously and specify a path if you wanted to do so. So you have this first way, which is the most bare bone ways of making the QR code. And here you can see you can add a bit more customization with specifying the border size, the size of the boxes, the colors and so on. There's more customization you can do as well, but I think this will kind of suffice for an introduction to how QR codes work. Finally, I just want to give you one example of what I talked about previously of why it is useful to use Pythons for QR codes. So let's say as an example, you have, a, you have a restaurant with let's say 120 tables, so a quite big restaurant. And your restaurant uses QR codes on the tables ranging from numbers one to 120 to get the, essentially the customers to scan the QR code order. And then automatically the table number will be sent because it's just included into the QR code. This is the clever way to do this. So what you first need to do is to then create all the links. So let me just fake an example of this. Let's call this links. And this, let's say this with a list comprehension. This is my awesome, my awesome restaurant. Dot com slash table i. Make this a formatted string like this for i in range. Let's start with one and end with one hundred and twenty. So that's for one to one twenty one. I think. Let's just see how this looks all the way from table one to table 120, great. Here we have the links. And of course, now we can make loads of QR codes. So say this was our design. And now we essentially needed just to make 120 of these in the same size and same border. So let's make our class like this, this we can just fetch. Then we need to add the data here. Of course, the data we should add is, so let's make this a for loop. So for table in links. Let's just loop through them. We initiate a class. We add the data like this. And of course, I don't need links of table. I'm using a for each type loop here. So let me just, so let's just add the table information here. Let's fit it. This shouldn't change anything. Let's have the fill colors. Let me of course have this above the table because I don't need to recompute them. And then let's create the image. Let me call this image subscript table, this QR make image, precisely with what I have here. And then it's the image table dot save. And let's save this as table. So maybe here I will also need the index. What I can do is to use the enumerate function. So if you use the enumerate function, I will get both the elements and the index. So here we can just do table i. And let's do dot png. And here we can see that the name i is not defined. This is because it's the index it's supposed to be. So let's fix this. 
And there it goes. Of course, my code here is very little optimized. I'm not saying that this is a perfect way of structuring a code or that it's very efficient, but honestly, it seriously takes like three seconds to make 120 of these. I can't imagine that you would need to make so many that this would be a big computational problem. So there's a mistake here, which is a common one. I'm in good company. Of course, I've indexed them from zero now, and then they go all the way up to 219. You can see here that each of them looks nice. So of course, what I should have done is to add just one here. Then if you run this again, you'll get 120 QR codes here representing all the different tables. A second great thing about doing this programmatically instead of a click and drag tool. So your restaurant was named my awesome restaurant. And that's cool if your restaurant is pretty small, but then it takes off and becomes this big Michelin star restaurant. So of course your name changes to Mia restaurant. And of course now you just need to rerun this with a different link and you get again 120 QR codes that you can then print out. You have the same colors, nothing that needs to be re-specified, everything here. So as long as you save your code, it's very robust just doing it again if you need to. So that's all I wanted to show you. I think generating QR codes in Python is really smooth and really easy. And I honestly think this is more or less everything you need to know to start generating QR codes in a really cool and awesome way. If you like the content we're providing here, then please like and subscribe, and I'll see you again in a future video.